Hello everyone! It's Tuesday. It's a completely different Tuesday, as you can tell from looking at the screen and seeing my elbow on the corner, a bunch of statues, a Steam controller, and a Ryzen 5 sticker, and a GeForce GTX sticker, on a black monstrosity of some sort. And this black monstrosity uh, comes to you, big, big courtesy, uh, of um, Artherin. Say hi, Artherin. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> whoop, whoop, fam. Yeah, there he is. Um, yeah, so Artherid, uh, you kind of helped me uh, put this thing together by purchasing one of the um, very, very necessary uh, bits of the upgrade. So uh, what exactly was going through your mind at that time? <laughs> uh, I had to I had to launder the money somehow. Oh, uh, I all mean, right. what? Okay. I, mean, I mean, what? <laughs> we shall say no more then. <laughs> Hello, Jill. So, Hi, Jill. Yes. So uh, there it is. There's the uh, the Steam box. Let's move uh, Joey out of the way. Hot. Yes. So uh, this uh, particular monstrosity that I still have to actually go in and fix the uh, the paint somehow because it's it's a bit chipped, poor old thing. But uh, yes, it's. Together, as you can see, there's an HDMI connector on the end there, and next to it is a, um, a Dell power supply with the very, very uh, typical blue LED that they have. And, um, yeah, well, I guess uh, I'm going to give uh, Arthur a chance, because you uh, also put a computer together recently, didn't you? The big yes, honking... Yes, I did. Well... Yeah. <laughs> Well, a month ago, basically, but so far one mo one month without any hard crashes, without fire or without any explosion. That's pretty good. Or, what or distro any... are you using? Manjaro. Manjaro. You know the art equivalent. <laughs> yeah, that clipped. Of of Ubuntu. <laughs> I had um, this tradition. Yeah. All right. So uh, you have a thirty nine um thirty nine fifty X, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bloody expensive. I yep. can tell you that. I could almost buy Threadripper for that same price. Yeah. <laughs> and there we go. It boots. Oh, no. It boots directly into uh, Steam Big Picture Mode. As a... Um, Lovely. <laughs> as a true Steam machine should. And I'm just going to scooch the um, video to the corner there. So it's out of the way. All right. So let's talk about uh, this thing that you uh, very much uh, kindly donated the graphics card and the uh, riser uh, to connect the graphics card on the other side of the motherboard. Thank you very much for that, by the way. Um, and let's talk about specs. I'll put the specs up on screen if I can find them. There they are. OK. So I called it the big D, as in dedicated GPU edition. Um, and it's running Fedora 31, 64-bit. Uh, it's, um, hold on, I'm going to have to scooch that back just so I can see where I'm navigating to. Oh yeah, I got to turn on the Steam Controller too. Because it does have a uh, Steam Controller receiver built in. Go figure. Right, nice. so we go to the system. That's... Uh, the way Ven said it is, um, that way I know where it is and I don't lose it. Okay. So, Fedora 31 64-bit with uh, an AMD Ryzen 5 2400G, which is running at stock speeds, base clock 3.6 and uh, 3.9 turbo, I believe. The uh, cooler on it is a Noctua NH-L9A, the a uh, AM4 AMD version. Uh, RAM is just... 8 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX because Ryzen likes uh, Vengeance LPX. The only thing I did to it was uh, set the cast latency to uh, CL14. Did you get a chance to play around with the uh, RAM latency on your 3950X at all yet? No, I set it to the XMP profile and never touched it. I am afraid that it would be unstable as all hell. Okay, like, all right. Like the that, first time I fair. brought Ryzen, that was, that was, that was a pain. Yeah, okay, that that's fair enough. And of course, the GPU, uh, courtesy of our third here, it's the Zotex um, GeForce GTX 1650 low-profile, 
And the specific reason that I had that on my wish list, and I would have eventually bought it, but someone got there first, thank you very much for that, um, <laughs> is because it is the single most powerful low-profile GPU in the market today. I tried to look for an AMD alternative. Uh, the most powerful AMD alternative was uh, an RX 560. Uh, that's not cool. That 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 video card is like three years old at this point. Come on. <laughs> I was hoping uh, we were talking about on Discord earlier uh, that at least a 5500 would have that option, but they're like 100 watts, even for the lowest end ones. I don't get it. I mean, that's, that's still the new architecture, right? Maybe there's still some kinks it on is, it. It is. It um, is Navi. Maybe it can be pushed a bit lower. Maybe sometime. Yeah, in the future. it's Who seven knows? nanometers. They should totally be able to do that. But for some reason, they haven't been able to. What uh, what GPU are you running in the uh, 3950 system? Currently, the still, the first one that I brought, the GTX 1070 MSI edition. All right. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Very I solid tried, GPU. I tried... Yeah, I tried overclocking it once, <laughs> and I somehow managed to make each of my three monitors ha be a different color, <laughs> solid color, and best of all, all hard lockup as well. Oh uh, yeah, no, uh, that means you ran over the voltage. You, uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, that that was part of the reason why because AMD they've locked down the um, the power tables on their GPU, so you can't actually change um, like the voltage and everything that they run at. Because if I had a chance to undervolt uh, this um, sixteen fifty, I would just because uh, the moment we start up a game, I don't know if the microphone will pick up on it, but maybe it won't. But they sound like jet engines. You know the sound? It's like uh, if you've ever started up um, Microsoft Flight Simulator or something and you, you just hear the jet engines, that's what they sound like. I've been in server room multiple times. I know what it sounds like. Yeah. Especially <laughs> yeah, it's, like it's the, not as the... loud and um, overbearing as a 40 millimeter uh, server fan, but they come close, mostly because they are 40 millimeters too. So, yeah, that it's that sound. Definitely not as high as a server room, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I'm basically almost deaf because of, because of <laughs> yeah. the coolers. Yeah, but, if, um, if you're going to be... If those ramp up to 100%, it's, it's almost unbearable. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be in a server room a lot, just buy noise-canceling headphones or proper earmuffs. That would be handy to know one year ago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the server room at work is um, minuscule. There's like uh, um, six 16U racks. So yeah, nothing nothing spectacular. Uh, but yeah, if all the servers are going, it's still pretty loud. So I can imagine like big company. All right. So we were at the... Uh, 1650 low profile the ssd that's in there is the same one that i already had in there in the past it's the 500 gig western digital blue m.2 sata ssd not nvme so keep that in mind if everything um well if things start to take a little too long it's we're dealing with sata speeds here uh, motherboard is the same one das rock uh, fatality ab350 itx ac because I know that it works. Uh, the previous one that I bought that now lives in Nori's PC had an issue. Um, because it didn't come with the um, right BIOS version. The BIOS version that it had was bugged and it didn't even see uh, any of the storage. So that was annoying. Thankfully, uh, ASRock kindly fixed that uh, when they introduced compatibility because this motherboard also supports the uh, 3000 um, series Ryzen's. So that's very nice. That's uh, very nice of AMD for the backwards compatibility. Right? With the socket. Like the, yeah, it's great. The AM4 socket and all of the um, like chipset compatibility from... Basically, if you have a B350 from... Asus or ASRock or MSI. I don't know about the gigabytes, but yeah, most of the brands went, okay, you can have uh, 
Ryzen 3000 uh, compatibility in the 300 series. That's awesome. That's amazing. Considering the... When did Ryzen come out? Was it 2017 or 2016? Yes, 2017 Seventeen, yeah. No, no, it really doesn't look like OpenMW, does it, Mir? Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, so that's the motherboard. It has built-in wi obviously. That's kind of important. Um, the power supplies, it actually has two. An internal one and an external one. The internal one is the interesting one. It's an HD Plex Hi-Fi 400 watt DC-ATX. And if you... Um, next week, Mir... Don't worry, it'll be back. <laughs> Say pretty please, and it will. It may be there today. <laughs> no promises. Yeah, no promises. Um, <laughs> table flip. Okay, um, but yeah, the, that uh, HD Plex. If you Google for it, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's just a, it looks like a slab of machined aluminum or aluminium, since I am in the UK, um, and it can. Uh, hold uh, up until 400 watts from an external power supply and they very much recommend that you use external Dell power supply since those actually do pretty good. Dell uh, as a company they have some questionable decisions but when it comes to Linux support and power supplies they do a very good job. Go figure. <laughs> and uh, the case, well yeah, it's still the exact same uh, Xbox 360 uh, that uh, co-worker Dave gave me. So all of those specs in this um, in this system, and granted, it only has eight gigs of RAM, but it's a pure gaming machine. Gaming is all it does, and this is Linux. Eight gigs just for gaming is enough. Unless remember that game we were playing, Arthurin? Um, Tannenberg. Tannenberg. Yeah. Precisely. 16 gigs I need hard node, hard node my machine because I dared to have Firefox open. Yep. <laughs> it's just, nope. Not allowed. Precisely. <laughs> Why is three times I had to reboot that sucker? <laughs> yeah, except for games like Tannenberg or the uh, motorcycle one. Uh, that, that one straight up has memory leaks, so I wouldn't recommend trying it. But uh, yeah, uh, those games, they will eat whatever RAM you throw at them. So uh, let's at least hide. Tannenberg was fixed. Yeah, they, they fixed Tannenberg. But yeah, let's hide the specs now and uh, have a look at the games, what I have installed in this thing. All of these games are installed uh, locally just because I'm not um, running Steam on the. Uh, well, on my main box, which is just the streaming PC for this particular session. And um, as you can see, uh, a lot of those uh, look familiar if you um, saw my um, my video on El Cheapo a while back. Uh, Never seen one in my life. I, I mean, they were, they were good. They were good. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, the, the, basically, I'm just gonna go in and um, give it a chance for uh, Arthur and to feel really uncomfortable that he agreed to decide to um, join me for this stream. <laughs> so, Arthur and <laughs> I've made worse decisions, trust me. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, no. We all know how that game runs, uh, Ven. It, it, no. <laughs> you want that Xbox to be on fire today? <laughs> It might be, just wait, wait for your turn. Yeah, no, as soon as this benchmark starts, it might very well catch on fire. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see if we can skip, and uh, people should be able to hear the um, game audio, because the Black Magic card is, uh, as uh, Foxy put it, very picky as to when the it'll, it'll actually send audio through um, HDMI. So, if uh, for some reason the, uh, the sound of the game sounds crackly in any way, y'all need to let me know and I can just curb that. Y'all right need Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's hit the benchmark. I have everything set to Ultra, I believe. And then we'll compare the scores because I do have the, uh, the graphs for El Cheapo loaded up. The big plastic melting of 2020. Live. Yep. This is when it happens. So, uh, one thing I noticed with this particular, um, and you may notice it too if you've run it in the past. 
Uh, ignore the frame rate as you're seeing in the stream because the uh, card can only support 1080p 30. So 30 hertz is the most it gets. Well, 2997 to be more precise. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a bit herky-jerky on, on your end. You're just going to have to take the result uh, at face value. But as you can see in the characters, they don't have hair. None of them have hair. They're, they all have bus cuts. I did not know what that was uh, until I went to the Steam forums. It's like, okay, why is this happening? It's like, oh yeah, if you try to run uh, the game at Ultra with a GPU that has 4 gigs of uh, VRAM or less, characters don't have hair. That it just straight up doesn't happen. So it is a VRAM limitation of um, SMTP timecode. You know that I wouldn't even notice if I played it? Yeah. <laughs> I, th I thought it would be just like, yeah. Just general hair haircut for everyone. <laughs> or maybe developers l were lazy and yeah, I don't want to bother with hair. No, they, they all have hair and they all have different hair colors and hairstyles, but yeah. If you're running um, on Ultra with, less, uh, with 4 gigs of VRAM or less, you get no hair. That's a VRAM limitation, go figure. And there we go. So the average is 25.4 FPS on Ultra. Let's uh, have a look see at the OpenGL games when El Chipo, when it was El Chipo's turn. So El Chipo is the orange bar. And we can see Deus Ex Mankind Divided on Ultra was 34.9 on average. So clearly that um, RX 570 has a bit of an advantage, but then again, if you've been paying attention at the uh, hardware reviews, you already know that the um, 1650, when it came out, it was panned specifically because uh, the RX 570 was beating it. And uh, yeah, but the RX 570 requires an extra 8-pin power adapter. This one requires none. So big advantage to the uh, 1650 there. Right. Next up... Nvidia clearly wants your money. Oh yeah, at all <laughs> times, and at any the, cost. That's the thing. They they have so many SKUs that they can basically target whichever um, price they want. Uh, and kudos to them for actually providing a low-profile video card that doesn't require any external power supply. Or th that doesn't require um, more PCIe power. That's very good. And why isn't there... Oh, okay. It was just taking a while. Right. <laughs> Can you imagine externally powered GPUs? <laughs> uh, th there's the Akidio node and the Razer... Is it the Razer node too? Did it just call the external GPU enclosures nodes? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I know Razer has one and Akidio has one. Supposedly, it works on Linux, the external GPU. Yeah. So. Uh, it worked on Linux before it worked on Windows. Because, yeah, Thunderbolt worked pretty well on Linux out of the box. Not so much for Windows. <laughs> you know, at some point, I just stopped being surprised at statements like this. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... We have uh, Dirt Rally fired up right now. It's on ultra video mode. There's uh, no multi-sampling, it's 1080p. So let's hit the benchmark and once again, ignore the herky-jerky because, well, I, that's a limitation of the capture card of what I have. Then again, I don't get to complain because that was free. Uh, it was um, in a uh, an old desktop PC that someone, uh, one of Nori's, um, classmates left here uh, because I gave her one of my laptops uh, that was better than that PC uh, she had and was like are you sure there's nothing in here you want back it's like no 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 you can do it whatever you want so I took it apart and there it was a black magic intensity pro so it's like all right and it works you're watching um, this footage through uh, that very capture card right now so yeah, I'll I'll excuse the uh, herky jerky twenty nine ninety seven. Yeah, 
you don't really look into gifted horses still now. Oh no, no. <laughs> it, it, he would eat you, but <laughs> it wouldn't look. I don't know if it could eat me, but it, it would certainly bite, and I could do without. <laughs> yeah, the horse would just do group. Yeah. <laughs> Although, only uh, shoes would be left. If you if you are watching the stream, you're probably getting a better experience than I am because uh, OBS um, will have to translate this 2997 to um, 60. So there is some frame interpolation going, but it will still look a bit herky jerky. So, you know. but it certainly looks a heck of a lot better than the, um, old, uh, the that other USB 3 one that I used for El Cheapo. Did you watch that stream, Arthur? I think I did that. Yeah, that, that looked like that, that was great. Out of curiosity, how much would this card but 60 hertz would cost? Oh, the um, the 60. Intensity. Yeah, the Intensity Pro 4K, which does um, 3840 by 2160 at 30 or 1080p at 60. It's uh, 180 pounds, something like that. It's. It, they are stupidly expensive, uh, even used. It, it's something that they don't really devalue, as far as I can tell, because I've uh, had one uh, on Price Watch on eBay for a while, and it, they just don't drop in price. So, yeah. Under the head is not that bad. I yeah. expected a bit more. Yeah, the, I mean, I'm sure when they were proper brand new, um, Vents here, you'll probably be able to give you an exact value, but they were pretty expensive when they were brand new. Like most black magic software and hardware, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, professional. I mean, yeah, they yeah, are, are professional. More expensive, just because. Yeah. Looking at this footage, I could never get into the crowd. Really? Yeah, well, I'm just shit at cops. So oh, yeah. alright. <laughs> no racing I mean, games at all? No. I used to play a long time ago when we still had our very first PC that I don't even know the specs of. Uh, we, I used to play a lot of Colin McRae Rally with yeah. that <laughs> on uh, like split screen. I could somehow control it then, there, but this rally, I'm just hard mobile to the nearest screen. <laughs> Yeah, that's just... I was very happy uh, when it came out, because I like racing games. It, it's one of the genres that I actually do like very much. Oh, there we go. Average FPS, 81.80. Let's bring up that graph again. But yeah, it, it's a genre that I like a lot. And this one, I was surprisingly competent with a, mouse, uh, with, with a keyboard. Then again, if you're playing with a keyboard, you have all of the assists. So, yeah. <laughs> Right, uh, average of 81, 80. And uh, El Chipo uh, scored 78, uh, 75.8. So advantage, or I guess it's one to one. Uh, El Chipo won on Deus Ex. The Steam Box wins in the rally. And it still hasn't caught fire. That's or impressive. Melted, uh, all melt, melted most of the case, which is nice. Yeah, no, the, no the, you know, for uh, such crappy uh, Xbox plastic, it's holding the 70-something um, Cs that I'm guessing the GPU is at right now fairly well. How all right. is the exhausting air? Yeah, it, it, it's not uh, doing... It, it doesn't have a clear path. For exhaust yet? That's why I'm getting that knock to a fan uh, that we were talking about earlier. It's uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Make few holes and that's it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I have to uh, be careful with where I drill more holes because um, I already drilled a lot, and the structural integrity is not what it used to be anymore. So yeah, put a glass on it. <laughs> And, uh, and more RGB. <laughs> lots and lots of RGB. And uh, Foxy... It supposedly makes your computer faster, so... Yeah, yeah, no, uh, you set RGBs to red, and away you go. It, it makes them faster. And you still beat me, um... Yes, yeah, uh, Foxy did beat a bunch of my times that I did in the uh, practice, but I managed to beat Josh Walrath. Then again, he was playing with the steering wheel, so he doesn't get any of the assists. 
So I was basically cheating compared to him, but I managed to beat one of his times um, on a couple of tracks. So there's that. Any bragging right is a good right. Oh, yeah. In my book. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And uh, here's... Uh, I was... I did install F1 2017 and uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, but as I told Arthur in earlier, those two games, uh, since this is Fedora, for some reason, they're not working properly. But I will get those sorted out and run the benchmarks um, at some point. I'm just not going to try and start them on stream. So, instead we're going to go with Grip, because it's a Proton game that uses the Unreal Engine. So let's see how it performs. And I think I have the uh, DXVK HUD enabled for everything. So you had have you installed uh, do you have installed the Mango HUD? Uh I don't have Mango HUD installed here, although I probably should because that's one of the things that I don't get. Why doesn't Steam uh, allow people to enable a um FPS counter? on the overlay in Sim, uh, Steam Big Picture mode. I don't get that. I really don't. <laughs> it doesn't? Nope. It's probably an overlooked, maybe. Probably. But yeah, this is Grip, and uh, it uh, you can see in the menu here we're sitting at 70-something FERPs. Uh, the settings, I did have a look at the settings beforehand. Ignore that bit of motion blur, because that's just the menu. I have motion blur turned all the way off. As you can see yeah, on the right I, there. I hate that thing. <laughs> I hate the emotion blue. Ah. Yeah. I, I, I don't get why games still insist on having that. But yeah. Basically, uh, it's motion blur. It has the lower frame rate. That's why. Yeah. It still looks <laughs> ugly. And uh, so motion blur off. Sharpening is at medium. Anti-aliasing is temporal. Um, or TXAA. Uh, Anti-aliasing quality is high, uh, object quality is epic, shadow quality is high, everything else is epic, and the resolution scale is 100. Because, yeah, it's basically 1080p at 1080p, so no uh, resolution things happening there. Since this doesn't have a built-in um, benchmark, I'm just going to go in and um, drive around for a little bit so you can have a look at what the... Uh, where's the rest? There it is. What the, um... Hello? Race. Race. <laughs> it doesn't Race, want to. <laughs> For some reason I was hitting Y and it didn't... But now it goes. Okay. I blame fiber baboons. Yes. <laughs> In the UK. Have you Linux, Nuru, you old man. <laughs> okay, you so spread we it have... everywhere. On the starting line, we have 45, down to 40, and as we start moving, actually, the furps start going up. We're at 50, and I can't turn when it's this herky-jerky. 50, and we're past 60 now. Basically, the faster you go, the less details get rendered, the uh, better your frame rate will be. So, in that respect... Gotta go fast. Yeah, in that respect, Grip is doing a very good job. And once again, this is a 1650. It's um, basically the lowest end of what you could call a um, gaming GPU, I guess? I mean, there's even lower the integrated GPU. Oh, yeah, if you want to go integrated, like, you know, this very box used to. And we're off. <laughs> uh, All right. I guess integrated would eat... Oh yeah, no, uh, I'm pretty sure this game on integrated graphics, I'd have to have everything way down, like medium all the things, at least. And... Yep, Is it I that bad? No, it, it's really not, and if it wasn't for the herky-jerkies of the, uh, the capture card of the return video, it would actually be completely playable. So, 1650. Kicking ass. Right, that's enough of me crashing into walls. Let's, uh... Well, I was going to say I have a reputation to uphold, but I really don't. So... <laughs> so, I saw AD at most. Yeah. So it, it's yeah. basically, if you're doing well and you're going fast, there's less details that get rendered, and the um, FERPs actually hold very, very high. Uh, Metro, I uh, don't have the benchmark ready yet. I forgot to add the export, so I'll run that by the time the accompanying article to this video comes out. I'll 
have a run through that. Rise of the Tomb Raider is another game that doesn't work, but Shadow of the Tomb Raider worked yesterday when I tried it, so let's go into that. And watch me um, have to eat my words. No, 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 no. It, it It's loaded. All right, cool. <laughs> and before it hard noops. Oh, come on. It's been doing so well. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so far, no crashes or freezes or nothing. Can you hear you the uh, fans on the GPU at all? I hear something, but I'm not sure if that's the console or just other fans. I hear something. Yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, usually my background audio is pretty quiet, and um, uh, those mean, fans are hear very it. loud. <laughs> if, I, if I focus my ears, I can hear it, but not if you're talking. No. All right, cool. So, let's have a look at the display and graphics. So, we're on the uh, high preset. No uh, customization, motion blur is on, but this is just for running the... Um, the benchmark, so it stays on. And uh, as you refresh, yeah, uh, as you can see in the monitor, refresh rates like thirty hertz. Oh yeah, capture card. Uh, so yeah, that is probably going to skew the results a little bit. But I will rerun all the results without going through the capture card that actually plugged into the TV that it will be plugged into, so we can eliminate any sort of weirdness that comes from that. But yeah, so 1080p, high preset, let's uh, let's run the benchmark. And uh, I'm gonna put down the controller because this loading screen usually takes a little while. <laughs> a little while, will you be my friend? <laughs> yeah, no, it's very hard to play a game when you're driving that fast and the frame rate is as choppy as it is for me, it's like... <laughs> But, yes, come on, Tomb Raider, you can do it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right. It's taking a while. Yeah, it's only a quad-core CPU. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, still. It's a quad-core CPU and the SAT SSD. It's uh, one of the things I'll have to do is get a proper NVMe. Like, uh, At least it's not spinning rust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, don't don't get our drives anymore. It, it's really not good. I plan to only get hard drives for my server, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, my main desktop is all NVMEs. Oh, yeah. That it's, it's really something. No IO bottleneck. When I get a new motherboard for the uh, desktop PC, that's probably going to have to be the first thing I change, because that uh, B350 motherboard is great, and it supports the 3700X, no issues, but it only has the one um, M.2 slot, so... I need one more. I mean, the, there are cards that add additional M.2 interface uh, sockets, so... That, 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 that is a very good idea. Solution. Yeah, I forgot about that. I saw, yeah. I saw one from Asus that I plan to get mm -hmm. that costs like 50 or $60. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's pretty good, actually. I can yeah. maybe throw you a link later. Yeah, I, I forgot about those riser cards. Yay! That may very well be a possibility. Thank you. I completely forgot about those. Because I know that MSI, yeah. the one of the more expensive boards, the creator or godlike, I'm not sure, they are also giving you like the card mm -hmm. with a with an active cooler that has like two NVMe. Yeah, they, they have active coolers on the controllers, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, those things can get hot. Yeah, and I mean... If you if you put them to a rate, they will get even hotter. Yeah, I mean, at that point you're doing... Uh, what is it? Uh, PCIe by 4 on each of the uh, M.2s. So if you have 2 or 4 in a riser card, that controller is going to be uh, putting out some heat. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of heat. <laughs> If I put one on my desktop, I'm not that worried. It has like seven fans, like the big ones. Yeah. It should be fairly cool-ish. Yep. And we're almost done with the uh, benchmark here. It's You're looking at the uh, FPS counter on the top of the screen. It's like, oh, 40-something, uh, you know, for a 1650. Not too bad. 
Like uh, also during, there's also the 30 heads refresh rate. It, yeah. It can be a bit higher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And uh, it's like, yeah, no, that's that's not um, sh too shabby for um, what is the uh, entry level of uh, dedicated GPUs for the desktop, that is. Mm -hmm. So, there we go. Uh, let's um, move that out of the way. Average FPS, 46. Average of 46, and if we look at the frame times, they're actually very similar. So, yeah, no, that's, um... Can you show those graphs? Uh, I don't have, uh, on El Cheapo I didn't run, um... Oh. Okay. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But we can have a look at the, um, Rise of the Tomb Raider, I suppose. Uh, no, that was a Vulcan game. Vulcan, there you go. Rise of the Tomb Raider was, uh, 67.8 on, um... Very high. El Cheapo, yes. On the very high. But that was Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, with um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, they did s something to the engine, and it is much more demanding now. So it's not a fair uh, comparison. And I, I don't see that that much of a difference between Rise of the Shadow, except more vegetation. Yeah, and with vegetation comes tessellation, and tessellation is... Um, it's like one of the big things that brings down uh, performance. I remember. A bit more shadow. Yeah, and I remember uh, back in the old uh, Radeon 600 uh, series days, the R600 cards. Uh, basically, if you had any kind of tessellation, the performance would just tank. That was the, the reason that uh, Crisis performed so much better on um, NVIDIA than it did on AMD back in the day. They were doing tessellation in places you couldn't even see. Thanks, Crytek. <laughs> <laughs> and Crisis had more issues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like it, if you ha if you have CPU with high clock times, mm -hmm. like high clock, it would perform better than if there were more threads. Yeah. But you know, considering what time it was made and what decisions were made back then, it yeah. sort of kind of made sense. Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, especially uh, with like um, early 2010 and late, um, well, early 2010 video games that actually started to use more than one thread significantly. Um, let's play uh, the Talos Principle now. That's also a very good benchmark. Um, the, um, what was I talking about? I got distracted. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> choo choo! <laughs> oh no, wait for me! Uh, yes, games and threads. I'm the driver! Uh, yes. Wait for me! <laughs> so, um... Games, uh, uh, in the early 2010s, when they started using, um... Okay, the performance is all on Ultra, so we can fire up uh, the benchmark. And... Yeah, the games still very much care about that single-threaded performance. So if you have less threads, but with a higher clock speed, games will perform better, which is why as good as Ryzen is, and it is very good. Um, the Intel processors, like the 9900K, are still kings when it comes to uh, gaming performance. It's higher clock speeds. In the 9900K, most people just overclocked it to... Um, 5 gigahertz. Behold, like, oh, child, on an 8 core processor. You are risen from yeah. the dust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you walk in my garden. Hear now my That's voice. The, the and know that I am your maker. And I am called Elohim. It helps Vulcan a bit. Seek me it helps in my Vulcan temple. a lot. And uh, if you that was worthy. the reason that uh, Bulldozer failed as much as it did uh, back in the day. It's because. Instead of going for parallel processing and having multiple threads work on the same thing, no, it's just uh, one thread works on one job, and the next job goes to the next uh, free thread, or the thread that has the least load on it. So, yeah, the, basically, when it came to game development, uh, the, the big thing was single-threaded performance. So, yeah. 
AMD kind of lost the um, the parallel compute um, or asynchronous compute, whatever they are calling it nowadays. They kind of lost that war back in the day, but nowadays with DirectX 12 and Vulkan and basically all the improvements and people realizing, wait a second, we kind of do need more cores. These words um, and yeah, we within as it turns out, Vulkan and DX12 can just go, alright, so we have yes, 16 threads or 32 things. threads in Arthurin's case, let's just a story. push a, bun, uh, a bunch of uh, jobs onto the CPU, and then the CPU goes, yeah, I've got plenty more space. In the meantime, you have the GPU going at 100%, it's like, <laughs> I'm not used to working this hard. <laughs> I mean, the performance gains are worth it. Yes. And also, it helps a lot more, more games running on Linux, so I, I take Vulkan anyway. Yep. <laughs> and I remember with the Talos principle specifically, because when Jordan got the, um, the Skylake, the uh, 6700K, uh, he was basically just trouncing me in, in uh, gaming performance, obviously. But then, um, the Talos principal got a Vulcan renderer and said Vulcan renderer uh, actually very much liked all the cores. So all of a sudden, uh, my, um, my uh, 8370E at the time uh, with the 1080 uh, was basically kicking Jordan's uh, 6700K in a video game. It's like, oh, how about that? <laughs> And all day you had that smug look on your face, like, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now no, I don't regret that my felt purchasing nice. decision. <laughs> I didn't regret it for that, you know, just this one perfor uh, this one uh, benchmark. But, yeah. Right. I did a test the Talos principle with El Chipo, so let's bring up the Vulcan graph. And we have the Talos principle, 70.7. So once again, the G, the RX 570, slightly outperforms the uh, GTX 1650. We have 67.8 in the Talos principle. Again, it may perform better if it's not going through the uh, capture card, or it may perform the exact same. We don't know. What I do know is that yes. That is Vendetta Curse of the Raven's Cry, and yes, we are going to be running that benchmark. <laughs> Arr, this is gonna suck, matey. <laughs> ah, man. Yeah, yeah. I, remem I remember Van's stream of this, it was so... Yep. <laughs> oh, undescribably bad. Are you Not gonna let me skip the cutscene at all? I guess I need to plug in a mouse or something. Hold on. Mad Max Vulcan benchmark. It was left in Australia in the fire. Burnt to the ash. Okay, how about a weird keyboard? Oh, it's one of those small wireless ones. Yep. Hey, <laughs> the keyboard works. <laughs> I swear, Android games from 2013 looked better than this. <sighs> That's the thing. Uh, the, like, yeah, the, in general, the game looked pretty bad. But the, like, it, the character models, if you look at each individual character model, everything is stupidly detailed, uh, like you're the main character. Massively over detail in just about mm. everything. It's like, huh. <laughs> And if you look anywhere else, it's just blah. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. That's why I said it, lo it reminded me of some early Gameloft games of Android. They were the exact mm -hmm. same. Like very detailed characters, 
maybe a weapon if you play FPS, but yep. everything else <laughs> just looked bad. Yep. Okay, so we have uh, times. the graphics cranked as high as they'll go. Let's uh, let's hit the benchmark. Launch graphics benchmark mode. Yes. Just a side note, this game works better on Proton, but you can only play HD videos. Or, you can't play HD videos. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Um, on Linux, the, the performance was always terrible. Terrible. <laughs> I think on Windows as well, it wasn't that good. Oh, yeah. Device. When it was first released, just uh, called um, Curse of the Raven's... Or just called Raven's Cry. Because this game, it was it came out as uh, Raven's Cry, and then it got panned, critically. And it's doing another run, because with the graphics on high, it didn't score higher than uh, 30 FPS. So now it's doing it again. But yeah, it 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 got panned so much that the publisher, what were their name? Topware Interactive. Topware, yes. <laughs> uh, they went back and was just like, um, okay, we're just going to pull the game from the store, and then they supposedly um went out of business for a while, and then came back, and the game came back called uh, Vendetta, Curse of the Raven's Cry. It's like, okay, it's coming back with a vengeance. It, oh, wow, did you see the flickering on that water? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was impressive. <laughs> Refreshing seawater. Yep. Now with 100% less glitches. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yes, so, uh, Vendetta Curse of the Raven's Cry on medium, uh, on high it was like 29, but on medium it was 31, so, uh, if we go to OpenGL Games, once again, the RX 570 performed slightly better at 37 FPS on average at the highest settings. All right, okay, let me unplug the, uh, little weird keyboard thing again. Watch it blue screen. It's Linux. How do you know? <laughs> I'm the one who installed it. <laughs> you don't know that. Maybe some Microsoft monkey came and reinstalled it while you were sleeping. Oh man, that would have been the ultimate troll if Nori had managed to install um, Windows and um, set up Steam Big Picture mode to auto-launch and just get everything so that I wouldn't even notice. That would have been masterfully played. Yeah, let's give her ideas, oh, yeah. shall we? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I'll have um, I'll have to run the. Um, the benchmarks on Metro and Rise of the Tomb Raider and F1 2017 to have a proper comparison between this and uh, El Chipo. And of course, I will also um, do like the two graphs comparing the old scores with the just a Vega 11 GPU that's in the uh, 2400G versus the 1650. Because I, when the original article came out, I only tested the games were... Um, Dirt Rally and Talos, and of course the um, Unigen Heaven and Unigen Superposition. So there will be those comparisons as well. Uh, Geekbench. Actually, one of the things I noticed in uh, Geekbench, I don't have the uh, the graph queued up for that, I forgot. Uh, but yeah, with Geekbench, uh, the 2400G actually scored like 16,000 something uh, if you go to the Geekbench browser and you search for unaccounted for, with the, no the actual number four at the end, uh, you'll see, like, my scores show up, and this, for a quad-core 8-thread Ryzen CPU, first-generation Ryzen, because even though it has a 2000 uh, name, it is still one of the old 14 nanometer, uh, 14 nanometer? Well, 14 nanometer chiplet. Um... It was one of the first generation Ryzen's, uh, just with the uh, graphics adapter attached to. 
But yeah, no, it 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 is doing very well. It's like sixteen thousand in multi-threaded of Geekbench four and um, multi-threaded. I can't remember. I think it was four thousand something, four thousand ninety-six or something like that in uh, Geekbench five. Yeah, it, it is the same engine as Two Worlds two. <laughs> oh really? For, I wasn't. I wasn't able to get the Two Worlds 2 to work because it requires some weird activation. Like through through telephone or through email. I'm just mm-hmm. fuck off. It's uh, fuck that, uh, the old, uh, bringing the old licensing of uh, like shareware games back in the day into the digital age. I have it on Steam, you moron. <laughs> I also have key. Just let me through. Yeah, just let me, you know, you're giving me the key, you're putting, like, this big pop-up in my face. Let me, please, just please, <laughs> let me... Uh... The, we- the weird thing is that I played it, like, six or so years ago, mm-hmm. when I was still on Windows, on Steam it worked. I have no idea why. Yeah. It just, it doesn't, won't let me through. <laughs> Maybe it just hates me. No, you can ignore it if you don't want to play multiplayer, says Glog. I couldn't get through even to the settings. Oh, all right. Won't let me through. Mm. I tried. Well, uh, and I suppose uh, the last game that uh, I know works but that I haven't shown yet is uh, Dark Souls Remastered. Which, um, well, it's basically... The first Dark Souls, when it came out for Windows, was terrible. It wasn't until, like, uh, Durante, uh, the modder, went in and basically fixed the game for uh, from software uh, for them for free uh, that the game actually became playable. And, you know, major kudos to uh, Durante because I played all the way through uh, Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition, the non-remastered one, on Linux using his mod and I got all the way through it. I put like 140-something hours into the game, so major kudos to him. And with Dark Souls Remastered, it's basically the first game, uh, the same clunky physics, the same, like, heavy, deliberate movement, but with the Dark Souls 3 engine, so everything looks a little bit better. And you actually have, you know, proper 60 FPS, as you can see from uh, the uh, DXVK HUD on the top there. Yes. 60 whole furps. I mean, it doesn't look like it when I start moving, because, you know... 29.97, yeah. but yeah. Capture card. Theme. Yeah. But yeah, no, it is holding 60. It's like, oh, 59.9, 60.1, 59.9, 60.1. The, yeah. It's, um. It's working. This thing is seriously, Arthur, and thank you very much. You basically expedited my build of this. I wasn't expecting to have it finished until the end of the year and here we are in um, in february it's like seriously thank you very much for that uh yeah courtesy at least your weekend wasn't boring oh it absolutely wasn't <laughs> the um, yeah no this 1650 for what is for all intents and purposes i mean you can see my hand it's it is an xbox 360 still it, it's minuscule. Admittedly, it's, um, I'd show you the PS4 that's right next to it, but the camera is currently standing on the PS4 to give you that picture, so I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> the, um, yeah, the, the size, yeah, the Xbox 360 is a bit taller, but the uh, Xbox is more of a square shape, so it's actually got more, a lot more surface area. And, yeah, it, it's still the same enclosure. Granted, it probably needs a couple of holes here, or probably, as I've already ordered, the uh, the Noctua server-style fan. I'm going to put it right up here to pull air in from the power supply, because the power supply is, like, right down here. And just pull air out from the power supply, and since it's hot air and this is standing up, it's going to go out the top let convection do its thing. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's Dark Souls on something that looks like an Xbox 360 with a Steam logo slapped on the top, running at 60 FPS. Your How about them? is the Dark Souls of consoles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
also in regards to the cooling why you don't why don't you just throw the whole thing into the oil and be done with it <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be even quiet <laughs> and if it gets hot enough you can fry french fries in it yeah <laughs> just drop so like I mean, a... <laughs> it's, it's benefits all all the time <laughs> yeah it's it it's pretty good it's actually very, very good. And if it weren't for the fact that um, Rise of the Tomb Raider and um, F1 2017, for some reason, they don't want to even start up, I have yet to figure out why, but I will figure out why. It's probably something that Fed uh, Fedora is doing that it doesn't like. And to be fair, Feral do say that they do not support Fedora, so that, that, that's probably what's happening here. But Until you figure it out, I will blame SE Linux. I said SE Linux supermissive, uh, so it would I still only blame NSA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I kept it enabled, uh, but since the SteamOS session, since when you start Steambox, it just goes directly into the SteamOS session. Seriously, major kudos to uh, Flibit for still having the. Um, the guide on how to do that, if you go to, what is it, um, iculus.org forward slash finger forward slash flibbitajibibo, good luck figuring out the spelling on that, uh, <laughs> Google. yeah, he, below, like, uh, all of the things that he's worked on, he also has the, what's he called it, Bill's hat, and it's like, turn a minimal fedora installation into a Steam OS box. Hey, guess what? That's what I'm running right here, right now. That's. I think I, I found his post about this uh, on Google Plus. Yeah, that that's where the post originally ago, so. was. Yeah. <laughs> the only social network for socially inadequate people. I yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually going to post that link into chat right now, so everyone can see it. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, iculus.org for a slash finger for a slash flippitigibibo, and he goes, it's like, yeah, just download the, uh, net inst workstation image, do a minimal install, once your reboot login is root, run a few commands to install everything, um, what a, one thing I did that he didn't was I enabled the, um, RPM Fusion repos, more out of, I don't know, this weird sense that I kind of needed it, even though I probably didn't. But uh, I also didn't know that um, Negativo17 uh, has a repo for... Oh, that's right, the thing is in the way. Hold on, I can't see the menu. <laughs> um, has a repo for the NVIDIA drivers, which is awesome. It is One actually... Question, yeah? If I may. Can I run this script on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. No. Um, the... Nah. <laughs> the Negativo 17 repo for uh, Steam only works in Fedora and Sense... Sense... I don't know if it works in Sense 7, but I know it works in Sense 8 and CentOS Stream. CentOS 7? You might uh, be able to I, get it to yeah. work in CentOS 7. You might, but some libraries will be probably outdated. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I have Red Hat 7 at work. I know what I know. Yeah. <laughs> I some, some applications are pain to install, even bigger pain to compile, so I don't suppose this will be easy. Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, you, you can probably do it. You're just going to have to update a lot. Mm -hmm. to actually get it to work. And I have a CentOS stream installed on my um, scavenged laptop. And it works reasonably well. And using just um, Negativo 17 Steam repo and uh, RPM Fusion and a couple of others, you can actually start and play some games with no weird like graphical issues from outdated Mesa or anything like that. It's... Uh, mm -hmm. S CentOS Stream is surprisingly use, uh, usable on the desktop. Like that, that surprised me. <laughs> when can we see consoles with CentOS pre-installed? Yeah, that's it. Oh, soundtrack sale. Soundtracks are on sale. Okay. 
Uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's more of an enterprise thing. Let's go back into the system so we can have a look at those specs once again and scoot that back. Ooh, that's some sexy specs. Oh yes, authentic AMD, three point six gigahertz, four cores, eight threads, seven point six uh, gigabytes or eight gigs of uh, memory. How did I end up with Fedora? Well. As far as Linux distros go, Fedora kind of tends to get out of your way and let you do whatever you want, which is part of the reason why I really like to use it. Um, and there's a bit of history with Fedora and the uh, Steam Box. It, back when the 2400G first came out, the kernel didn't support... Um, the mode setting on the Vega 11 GPU that was integrated in the 2400G. So, half the time, uh, you couldn't even get the system to boot. Heck, if you were using um, any of the Ubuntu's like 1710 or 1704 at the time, it just uh, they just wouldn't work at all. Uh, SteamOS, I tried uh, SteamOS 2.0, but that was so stupidly out of date that of course it didn't even work at all. So Fedora was the only one that I could sort of get it to start if I did a cold boot, basically if I had nothing in RAM at the time and the, basically the system would just brute force the uh, mode setting through. And oh yes, if you are on Arch, uh, the uh, Steam session Git is very much on the AOR. But Fedora was the only distro that actually allowed me to use the old um, the old version of the uh, the Steam Box as well um, as it did. Right up until kernel, I think it was 4.19 came out. Kernel 4.19 was the kernel that fixed all of the issues for this particular uh, APU. Uh, let me put the specs up on screen since I'm done showing off the game, so there we go. And yeah. It's, um, Fedora was the distro that worked best, and it it keeps itself relatively up to date. Uh, so as soon as 4.19 came out, I installed it. It's like, oh, oh, I can actually use this really well now. I seem to have some design differences with the gnomes. Everyone does. Everyone does, Fulliston. Everyone does. <laughs> I don't know. Gnome can be fine if you use, like, dash to panel, and all of a sudden, instead of having that weird heads-up display, you actually have a panel down at the bottom. I can sort of live with the full screen. What is your uh, preferred desktop uh, desktop environment, Arthur? And uh, it depends. On desktop, yeah. I have currently KDE plus one. Yes. On laptop, I have uh, Gnome. Okay. And on tablet, I have... I am currently trying out deep in and gnome which one works better with touch screen yeah it's that's it's, fair that's very fair it's, <laughs> yeah it's sort of a kind of works ish <laughs> it's not ideal let's be honest it's not android but yeah it it's usable I would As, still if you have a laptop with a touch screen i could certainly make the argument that gnome is kind of the uh, de that you want to be running because you have yeah. these big uh, title bars that you can like put your finger on and drag around the screen and Mom also has the multi-touch gestures yep you have and they, they work but they can be finicky because the cpu that i have on the tablet is bad it's yeah. the it's one of the u ones oh uh, no the y ones, oh the very, y's very yes the atoms basically the successors to the atoms yeah <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be i7 why? It's the Y7, yes. <laughs> it's, it's basically Atom. <laughs> it's the so, Y. Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Why? And when when the when the sucker warms up, basically while watching YouTube, yeah, it, it just warms up. The fans fans start up. <laughs> Half of the screen is just not responding to the touch, or it's just making its own. Yeah. Like, like why is why is the window moving? Stop it! Stop! Eh. Just nightmare. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to scoot the um, camera picture, make it a little bit bigger. Sexy. And um, yeah. 
so you can have a look at just how terrible terrible the paint job is right now but i will fix that that is uh, yeah. the last thing that i still need to do is just fix the paint and uh take some good looking pictures of it and just write the article the chipping gets to the aest aesthetics a little bit if we ma ma somehow managed to make it sprinkle some more it could look like a heaven during night actually stars. yeah that's not a terrible idea you know, it would look look almost like the nebula with the purple yeah. blueish color yeah. around the black and also the white spots that, that are like stars. Mm-hmm. I like that idea. Yeah, I, I could see that work. Yeah. I'm probably going to have to ask Nori because uh, I suck the moment I have any kind of paintbrush or um, coloring pen in my hand. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Adam Savage, you are not. No, no. <laughs> and um, actually, you you want to talk Savage? Here, let me show you something. Yes, Glock, I know about hardware accelerated MPV. The CPU just sucks on the tablet. And I don't want to ask myself to configure to play everything through MPV from the browser. Uh, let me get more light. Okay, so more light. Now, uh, as you may have noticed, the um, IO shield is all black. I did paint that because that black and red gamery look uh, that the Fatality uh, has, not my cup of tea. But I would like you to look at the bracket that the GPU is, uh, well, it's the GPU bracket. It's actually the original um, GPU bracket, the low profile one. And I'm sorry, Artharin, but I had to uh, take some chunks out of it. <laughs> I mean, the GPU is basically yours. So <laughs> yeah, you, no. you can molest it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I had to uh, clip off the top of it and I uh, had to clip like you know one of the uh, little bits at the bottom that you would hook on the in between the case and the motherboard mm -hmm. I had to uh, cut the uh, bottom one so I could fit the external power supply right there in fact if we turn off the uh, steam box like, let me just hit the power button and you can see the background has uh, gone down and away it goes so this is the external power supply it's just a regular um 7 mil 7.4 millimeter power connector most of the um professional grade laptops all have the um this kind of um yeah i know the connector. massive bricks yeah yeah i know which ones are those yeah i have sim similar one for my dell laptop yeah, yep, yep. That, yeah, they all also have the blue, the blue LED. Ring. Yeah, uh, you could also get the uh, for like the lower end laptops. You get the ones with the white LED around the uh, the rim. But yeah, it's yeah. it's together, and it's big big thank you to Artharin for um, the GPU and for joining me on this stream because yeah, we've actually done an hour of this. So thank you very much for joining me. It was and, a pleasure. Yeah. And, um, yeah, thank you all, uh, people who have been watching us and listening to our ramblings. Uh, thank you very much, and I shall see you all tomorrow for Linux Weekly Little Wednesdays. You will also have some Jordan stream he didn't do last week because he was uh, all the way in uh, Viva Las Vegas, but he's back, so there will be a stream. And, of course... With on cocaine and bookers. Not so sure about the hookers, but uh, the... <laughs> uh, the ones he didn't eat. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> but, yeah, on Friday, uh, Ven will also be uh, doing his stream. Um, I think... you uh, Have you been watching Ven's streams, Artharin? Has he... Not, not much, because his streams, like, half, half uh, midnight or 3 a.m. Uh, yeah, they, they, they start at, like, sleeping. midnight 30 here. It's like... I. Do you need to get up at 7 the next day? I mean, I would watch the Fridays <laughs> once because it's like the weekend next day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that is yeah. a good point. <laughs> yeah, I just need to force myself, basically. Yeah. But, yeah, it's... um. 
on Friday, Vent will be back. Uh, I think he's still getting through uh, Black Mesa, but he'll let me know. Scott, you're a bit late. Just a little bit. Hey, Scott. <laughs> But yeah, it's, um, and of course, Saturday, we have the uh, big show, Linux Gamecast uh, Weekly. And if you, like Scott, uh, just caught the tail end of this particular stream, feel free to uh, go watch it on YouTube. Uh, the VOD will be up at some point. And of course, uh, the um, accompanying article will be up as soon as I'm done figuring out why those two games didn't run and once i have all of the benchmarks and the pretty pretty graphs for everyone to look at obviously all right thank you again Arthurin, for everything and um i shall see you tomorrow how's that yeah sounds good to me cool i'll be all watching right. for sure <laughs> all right bye everyone bye